in Jude, a very similar passage. It says, in the very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring slanderous accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatever they do not understand. And what things they do understand by instinct, like unreasoning animals, these are the very things that destroy them. I love that term in the NIV, the way, you know, uh, King James Version says brute beasts, I believe, but the NIV calls them unreasoning animals. Just look around you. Look at the leaders in our nation. Look at the people that are in charge of your local government, your state government, your federal government. They're like unreasoning animals. They simply go by the, the, the gut and they don't go by knowledge or wisdom. Instead, they are bringing on us judgment because of their unreasoning attitude. They don't think things through. They just do what will bring them more power, will bring them more grandeur, but in the end, we will be the ones who receive the punishment because of it. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshiped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed in the proper time. This is Paul writing about the Antichrist to come. And he, he, he had spoken to him about it, and he says, can't you remember? I talked to you about these things. The day of the Lord is not going to come until the Antichrist is revealed. And here we are facing right now the prospect of possibly in our lifetimes the Antichrist coming back. And when that happens, the glory will have departed. The world will be under the spell of the Antichrist and God's presence is going to be with the saints in heaven while the earth is under the, the uh, spell of the demons and of the Antichrist. And I got to tell you, you need to make wise decisions now or we will be facing this judgment and we will be, uh, you know, as a nation, not Christians, they're going to be out of here, but as a nation, it will be a horrible time to be alive. So now is the time to make the right decisions concerning this before the Lord has departed the land of Ichabod. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Paul is saying that this, this unholy power has been at work since his time. That was 2,000 years ago. And it's slowly moving through history. And people say the church is ushering in the kingdom. Well, obviously it's not. If the secret power of lawlessness is already at work and it's growing stronger, then obviously the kingdom is not being ushered in by man. The kingdom will come when Jesus Christ returns. We have nothing to do with it. It says, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so until he is taken out of the way. Uh, scholars d dispute on who he is, who the he is that's being talked about in that verse, but it's either the church or it's the Holy Spirit. Most likely it's the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that guides the church. The church, as I said, has not been a force for good throughout the years. People have, but the institutions really have not. And so I would say my own personal opinion is that it is the Holy Spirit who is restraining the power of evil now, but he will be taken out of the way and then the power of lawlessness will be revealed in the Antichrist. Now what does that mean? If blood-bought believers in Jesus Christ are marked with the Holy Spirit, as it says twice in the book of Ephesians, and the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, then that means there must be a rapture. I was sat in a church here not too long ago and they really, uh, you know, they put down dispensationalists and people that believe in the rapture, but there it is in black and white. It means what it means and it will happen. There will be a time when the Holy Spirit is taken out and with it, the believers in Jesus Christ. We will not be here when the Antichrist is revealed. And it goes on to say in the same passage, and the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. People that are left behind after the rapture are going to see this person, they're going to see only a counterfeit of miracle working. They're not going to see the true miracles. And when that happens, 
the world will fall under the spell of this wicked person, this Antichrist, and they will give their total allegiance, their souls, everything to him and to his authority, saying, look it, we're free from the bonds of God. We have this person who is our God, and instead they are going to go into a, a whirlpool of disaster. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. If you are not born again, you are of the devil. The Bible makes that absolutely clear. It says the reason that the Son of God was manifest was to destroy the works of the devil. All human beings are the devil by default. If you heard my previous speech in a different capital, then you know that that is true. It's substantiated throughout the Bible. And God will send a delusion to those people so that they will not be able to determine the truth anymore. When the Holy Spirit is taken out, when the rapture occurs, people will no longer even be able to find the door, which is Jesus Christ. Now, there's an Old Testament passage in uh, the account of Sodom and Gomorrah, which prefigures this very occurrence. And I'd like to read that to you. It says, but the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck, meaning the angels, they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so they could not find the door. The Old Testament prefigures what's going to happen in the New Testament, and it is a very clear parallel. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, the people were blinded, so they couldn't find the door. Jesus Christ says in the book of John, I am the door. It says in Revelation 4, 1, I saw a door open in heaven, and up I went in the Spirit. It's, it is painfully obvious what is going on, that the rapture is going to occur, the Holy Spirit is no longer going to be here on earth, and the Antichrist is going to have his way. And when that occurs, the people will be deluded. They will be blinded, and they will not be able to find the door, which is Jesus Christ. And the world is going to go into a great tailspin. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. This is Old Testament symbology. The Jewish people still use it today in their wedding ceremonies. And Jesus is using terminology that they would understand. Five of them were foolish and five wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but they did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamps. Now the oil is a picture of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. Yes, he's been 2,000 years and we're still waiting for the bridegroom. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep at midnight, meaning a time when everybody is asleep, nobody is expecting it. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. These are people that have been sitting in churches. They've been, you know, paying lip service to the Lord, thinking, oh yeah, I'm a good Christian and all this kind of stuff. And they, they have no heart for the Lord. They have no oil in them. And they will, when the Christ comes and says, you know, it's time to leave the earth and I'm going to take you out of this place, those people will not be ready for him. It says, uh, no, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in to him, with him to the banquet, the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. The door was shut. By the way, when the door is shut, you're not getting in. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Christ is going to come at a time when we do not expect. It's going to be sudden, and those people that failed to believe it or failed to, to honor him with their lives now will be left behind. They will be deluded by God, and they will be destroyed. The Antichrist is going to come and do these things. The glory will have departed, the land of Ichabod. I hope you're seeing this, and I hope you're paying attention, because I am fully convinced that the Bible is true, and that these words are correct and accurate, and that there is no mistake in them. These things are going to come to pass, and it's going to happen so quickly that nobody that wasn't ready will be able to enter the door.